Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming and on this video tutorial I'm going to show you how to make these beautiful beaded crocheted necklaces. I'm going to give you some ideas, I'm going to tell you what I'm using and um, I am trying to get my uh, camera to just record mostly my hands so you can see close up. But let me tell you a couple things. First of all, I am not an expert crocheter. I am just a person who saw these necklaces and thought, $30? No way. I know I can figure out how to make it myself. And that's what I did. And for about a year, I made tons of them. Tons and tons and tons. <laughs> uh, and then I haven't touched it in a, a good while. So I'm a little rusty. Uh, but I'm going to show you basically what I did. And this is the thing that you need, in my opinion. There might be something better, but this is called Eslon um, Bead Cord. Uh, I bought this at a craft store in Boise, Idaho. I'm sure you can get it everywhere else, too. I don't know if I flipped my phone or not. But I'm not going to worry about that because you're going to be looking at my hands. Okay, and then you're going to also need some seed beads. And you can get them in a ton of different colors, you know. Today I'm going to use a variety of blues. Um, they're not expensive. They don't have to be anything fancy. You can find those at Walmart. Um, I'm also going to use something kind of unusual which are flossers. <laughs> These are designed for people who have partial dentures or orthodontics or different things to make it easy to get your, um, your floss through your teeth. And I use these to get my beads on my cording, okay? So I'm gonna use this white uh, cording today with the hope that that will be easier for you to see, I don't know. Anyway, so I'm gonna just, I'm leaving it on the little spool and I'm going to just put it through the hole of my flosser. There's gotta be a better way to do this, but this is how I'm doing it. And I poured out a bunch of beads and I'm just gonna start grabbing a mix of them. I do want them to be all the same size but you could do absolutely whatever color you want. Um, you could do larger beads. I'll show you one of these over here that has larger beads on it. I like these to have a good mix of colors. Okay, so here's a variety. All right, so this one I did with a mix of sizes of beads. Can you see that? So you can absolutely do that if you want. All right, then I'm just going to take my little uh, flosser and I'm gonna poke it through the holes. Whoops. I'm gonna flick a few of these little seed beads all over the place. So see, I've got a couple on here and I'm just gonna pull it onto my cording. And you're gonna put however many you want, when you're all finished, if you have extras on there that you didn't need, you can just put them back in your container. This cord is nice. It might be decent to get your beads on a cord without a flosser, but it just, it really does make it so much easier. So let me grab a few more. So hopefully you guys can see okay. I am, let me tell you this one thing about myself. I am a pretty good crafter. Um, and that's mostly because I'm just a determined kind of person to figure things out, usually on my own, to be able to do what I want to do. However, I am not great with technology. <laughs> and my goal with that, really, 
is just to keep it as easy and as simple as possible. So I know there's a million things I could do to improve the quality of this video, but I'm doing the best I can. I did try. I know someone will tell me, you should be filming from up ahead, from over the top. I tried to do that, everyone, and my tripod kept tipping over. <laughs> So this was the best solution I could come up with. Okay, so you're gonna just pull all of your beads onto your cord, and then you can put your flosser away. Okay, and this is how I start a crochet. Um, this is just gonna be a running stitch. I just tie a little knot, and I am using, these are not fancy crochet hooks. I think these came from Walmart. This is a size eight. And um, I don't know if you saw this video when we made these adorable little pouches for crochet hooks, but it's still one of my very favorite projects. So, okay, the trick, hopefully you have done crochet before because if you have not, uh, I, I don't know that I can fully explain how to hold it. Um, really, I think more than anything else, I'm hoping that I'm showing you just how to do the beads. Okay, so this is how I hold mine. I hold the tail in between my pinky and my next finger. And then I hold, wait. <laughs> and then I'm gonna hold the, um, the end that we're gonna crochet on right here. And the first stitch is hard. I'm just gonna grab it and pull it through the tail. Okay, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna chain five. There is a little pressure also to be doing this on a camera, not sitting in a comfortable chair. So I'm gonna chain one, and that's not tight enough. We can just slide it down and tighten it up a little bit. Two, three, four, five. Okay, I've got a chain of five. And then I'm just going to pull one of these beads up next to my crochet hook. Oh, okay, so the piece that you're crocheting on goes between your pinky and then around your first finger. Okay, and then I'm holding the tail with my thumb and second finger. So, can you see how I just pulled this up next to the last chain? I'm just going around it and chaining. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, let's get our next bead. I'm gonna pull it clear down here, right next to my crochet hook. And I'm just going to chain right over the top of it. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> I am a little nervous to show this to you because I'm not an expert crocheter, but it is, it's so relaxing. One, two, three, four. And it's something you can do sitting in a comfy chair, you know, in the evening, if you're watching TV or a movie or something. Um, and once you get going on it, okay, so I'm pulling this bead up to right next to my crochet hook, and I'm just gonna chain right over the top of it. Can you see that? And pull that through the, the loop. And then I'm gonna chain, oops. Okay, so this is what this is looking like right now. And I would just keep going until I was done with the beads. And you're gonna to want to put a whole bunch of beads on, especially if you're gonna do a long necklace or bracelet or whatever you're making. This is one example I wanna show you. This is a super long one. And I used gray cording, and then I used a big variety of color of beads. And then when I wear it, I will just triple it.
So it's like this. Can you see that? And you can do fun things like adding silver pieces, bigger beads, uh, and usually I just will kind of tie a knot to end it, but this one I put a clasp on it. So, can you see where I finished it? I just tied a knot. And this was just a metal, not even silver clasp. It's a toggle. And I'm sure this came from Michael's because they have good pieces to make jewelry. And then I made that little tassel. Okay, so that's one. Um, it's really pretty, I think, to use some black cord and blue. Obviously, blue was like my favorite. And this one, um, this one I just ended with a knot. It doesn't even look great, but it's at the back of your neck. Can you see that? I just did a, a double knot at the end. And I put... Um, this coin from Confederate Hel Helvetica, Sweden or Norway or something, on it with a little key and some beads. And it's just on a, you know, on a round loop. Um, this one's similar, but I put the doodads on one of these um, loops over both uh, pieces of my necklace and um, these are coins that I had uh, and this was a Silpata <laughs> cross that was beautiful that I didn't really love that necklace anymore so I took it off and put it on here. This is all the same idea. Um, so there's just so many different things that you can do and you can get this cord in all different colors of tan, gray, silver, black, white, taupe. Um, so this is what it looks like on white. And here's what I want to tell you. Yeah, Susie, I know you can do it if you used to knit scarves. I grew up um, knitting and crocheting and sewing Barbie doll clothes. And I grew up crafting with both of my grandmothers and my mom. And then I relearned how to crochet. I have not relearned how to knit, but I think it would come back if, if, I, um, if I tried. Okay, somebody's saying, show me how I crocheted the beads. All right, let me see. I can move this a little bit more towards me so I can see what I'm showing you. <laughs> okay. So I have an eight crochet hook. And um, I have put my beads on using that little flosser. If you missed the beginning, come back. And I'm just going to pull my beads up a little bit, one at a time. I've done a chain of five. Can you see that? And I'm pulling my bead up to where the next uh, chain would go. And I'm just going to pull my crochet hook right over the top of it and chain it right in there and then do two, three, four, five. And then let's pull another one up. When you're sitting down, you'll get so that you can hold it so you don't have to do all this rigmarole to get each bead pulled up. But see, it's right up there next to the last chain and I'm just chaining right over the top of it. One, two, three, four, Five. All right, what you also might have noticed is how loose those chains are. And what I wanna tell you about that is some of that is because of how stiff this particular cord is. Because when I'm in good practice, when I've been doing it a lot, when I'm sitting down somewhere comfy and I'm using a little bit smaller crochet hook, I can do much smaller chains and it's just a different look but this is a good start and I haven't done this in three or four or five years. <laughs> 
So it kind of comes back to you and it just looks different. Um, let me show you on this gray. This is what I was practicing on earlier. This is what I've been working on. It's also big, big chains, but that's okay. Where's my loop? Looks like I lost two of my chains. One, two. This one's softer and it's a little bit easier to work with. So come on, beads, get up there. And I, I just pulled it right up. One, two, three, four, five. Get this bead right here. I'm pulling it right up to next to that last chain, and I'm just gonna chain right over the top of it. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so let's pretend that this is long enough for a necklace. How do you end it? Okay, well, what you're gonna do is you're going to, I don't have any scissors out, let me grab some. You're just going to cut your thread and you're gonna pull the tail through the loop and it will form a knot. And that's what happened at the other end. Okay, and then this is what I did, but you know, if you're more skilled than me, you can do something fancier. I just pulled the two pieces up with the knot, and you guys, I apologize if I'm blurry or shaky <laughs> or don't know the right words. Um, I am that kind of crafter that just does, does it, just figures it out. Okay, Glenn Hunter Dryden is asking an excellent question, and then I'll show you this. She says, do you load all the beads up at the beginning? Yes, I do. And see, I still have beads on here that I didn't use. So I'll just take them off the cord and put them back in my little box. But I would say, if you're gonna do a long necklace that's like two loops, put um, 50 or 60 beads on there and see how that works. Uh, you can always, if you have too much, that's better than not having enough. Okay, so I have the two ends of my chain and they both have that pulled knot at the end. And I'm just gonna do a square knot. And I'm gonna try to pull it as close as possible to where those other knots are. And that's it. That is how I end them. And then I would snip this off. And there we go. There is a necklace. What do you guys think? Wanda, we're doing um, these necklaces that are um, crocheted uh, beaded necklaces. And I haven't done them in a while, so you can see I was able to get a much smaller chain, much smaller, but also I was using a different crochet hook, which I think would be a little bit difficult for you all to see on this video. So that's why I opted for this eight. I could be using, you know, one of these little teeny, teeny ones. Or this one. But I'm not, uh, I'm not practiced enough right now. <laughs> to be able to do that. This is a two and a half, two and three quart, 2.35, or is it a one? And this is a three. They're little, versus this is an eight. And my crochet hooks just came from Walmart. So did most of the beads. Um, I've kind of organized them by color and put my cording in here um, in these little containers, but this is an example of how they come. Glass seed bead assortment. This was probably, I don't know, six, seven, eight dollars. And there's a ton in there. Where do I get the cord? Okay, the cord is this. This is what I use. There may be others. S-Lawn. And I'm sorry I'm backwards. 
I'm not sure if I can, I don't think I can flip it at this point. So it's S dash lawn. And this is TEX 210, medium weight um, bead cord. It comes in a bunch of different colors. You might be able to get it on Amazon. When I'm finished, I'll look and see. I bought this at a craft store called Craft Warehouse. I think that's where I got it, in Boise, Idaho, a long time ago. And I just, I hadn't gotten to this yet because I have all these other ones that are still waiting, you know, to go. Uh, anyways. I first saw this idea at a craft fair somewhere and they wanted like $30 a piece and I'm like, oh my gosh, I know I can figure out how to do that because I know how to do a basic crochet. So then I looked around to see what kind of cord I could get and I just started doing it and then for two years I gave these away to all my friends in Bible study, to my girlfriends, to family, um, I mean, all kinds of different things. And the, the lady who used to be the teaching director of my Bible study, she still occasionally wears hers. And um, I always say, oh my gosh, what a beautiful necklace. Where did you get that? Anyways, what size is the crochet hook? Okay, for this, I used an eight. I used this one. Let's see if we can just do a little crochet with a smaller crochet hook. And let me see what the difference looks like. I am way out of practice, you guys. Okay. Way out of practice, but I didn't want to wait any longer to show you. Okay, this one is a D-3. Okay, so I've got my B pulled up to my last chain. One, two, two, three, four, and it is way easier. Okay, those chains are a little bit smaller. Um, it's really the tension and how you pull it after you do each kind of chain, you kind of pull it tight. Um, so I would say just start with whatever crochet hooks you might have. Okay, Beth says it's like crocheting with cotton maybe. Yeah, except I don't think these are made of cotton. I think these are nylon cord. Let me read you what it says on the back. I'll get a screenshot or I'll take a picture of it so it's not backwards. It says S lawn bead cord is 0.5 millimeter, three ply twisted, bonded multi-filament nylon cord. And it says for use with six, eight, and 11 um, over, over zero seed beads or other beads with at least a 0.8 millimeter hole. And then each one of them has 77 yards on them. They last forever. I would think that you could probably just buy one at a time. Okay, so let's see. It's hard for me to see the comments when I um, have my camera aimed so far down. So I tell you what, when I get off, I will read all of your comments. And um, I hope anyways, well, I don't care if I impressed you that I'm the best crocheter in the world, because I'm not. <laughs> For sure. But I hope that I've showed you that this is not hard. And if you can do a simple chain, and if you can get some seed beads and put them on this cording, and I used my little flossers to do that, that you can do this. And it just takes a little practice um, and a comfy chair and some good light, and a cup of coffee, or a glass of wine, or a Diet Coke, or something. And, um, okay, we'll see if those chains were smaller. So it definitely depends on the size of the crochet hook that you're using. 
and also, and I know this is so small to be able to see, but see, it's just pulled right up next to that last chain, and I'm just chaining right over the top of it. One, two, three. Four, five, look how small those chains are compared to the ones at the start. It just takes a little practice. Anyways, Joey, I know you could totally do it because you are a pro crocheter. Um, and you probably have already made these before. You know, I didn't invent this. I just saw it at, um, at a craft fair and I thought, I'm not going to spend $30 on that when I could make it, when I could figure out how to make it. And they're just different and unique, and um, I just loved the idea of it. So I figured out how to do it, and you can too. All right, well, let me know in the comments if you have questions. Sprinkle, sprinkle, please. That would be great. I'm going to get pictures of the front and back of this. Joey's just like me. She, her page is created and on. She's a friend of mine. She says, I'm always trying to figure out how to make things I see. Me too. And usually I'm trying to figure out how to do it in the simplest way possible. That's the same philosophy that I have for uh, filming. <laughs> I don't have any fancy equipment, you guys, because I'm just trying to keep it simple and enjoy what I'm doing. And yeah, I know if I had a professional camera crew, my videos would be way better, <laughs> for sure. But, um, but I don't. Okay, Linda's asking, how many beads do you put on? Okay, Linda, that totally depends on how small your chain is and how many you want. This one probably has a hundred. Or how far apart you want them. You could do five chains and then put a bead on, or you could do 10 chains and put a bead on. Um, so it could, this is a super long one that's all tangled up now. This probably, oh shoot. This one probably has over a hundred. So start with a short necklace, like a simple one that just is one, one loop like this. And maybe put 50 on and then you can kind of uh, you can kind of see if that's enough Joey says my down-to-earth approach makes everything seem so doable you're so sweet Joey I love you um, anyways that's what I wanted to show you right now I am planning to be live again today one thing is at 12 30 we'll be doing our devotional which is called go for it uh, written by Melissa Horvath, and it's about boldly living the life that God has created uniquely for each one of us. It's so good. It's like 15, 20 minutes. So come back to DIY Dreaming at 1230 Eastern Time if you want to just see what it's about. Um, I do it on Monday, Tuesday, and Thursdays, God willing, at 1230. Sometimes um, our schedule just doesn't cooperate with that. Um, and then I'll be crafting as well. Not sure what we're going to do. But one thing we will be doing soon is we'll be making these fun little cuff bracelets. Probably next week. There's a zillion different things we can do with that. Are, am I feeling better? Thank you, Wanda. I came home from Bible study yesterday feeling terrible. I had a headache as I, I was driving home. And I had a headache all night, um, but I'm good today, so thank you. All right, well, you guys, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I hope that, that you feel like you could do this. Even if you've never crocheted before, a simple chain um, is easy, and you can ask Mr. Google or Miss YouTube how to do a simple chain stitch crocheting. Um, you can buy crochet books super inexpensively at Walmart, Michael's, Joann's, Hobby Lobby. This is the cord that we use, which I'll get pictures of, and I'll put it here in the comments. The seed beads can be absolutely whatever you like. 
I'm never in a million years going to use all of these. You don't need that big of a <laughs> container. And then the doodads that you put on it can be just absolutely whatever you want or nothing at all. Oh, Dorothy says she didn't see how I added them. And I do I have one still open? Okay, I'll show you one last time. And then if you missed the beginning of this video where I showed in detail, um, you can come back and watch the replay. Okay, so I threaded a bunch of beads onto my cord. And I'm going to chain, I need to do one more chain here, five. And then I'm going to pull the bead up right to the last chain. My phone is not wanting, uh, not wanting to focus very well. I'm sorry about that. So you're going to pull it right up to the last chain and you're just going to chain right over the top of it. One, two, three, four, Five. Sometimes when you get them too tight, it's hard to get the chain through. And don't worry if, if on some of them you do five chains and some of them you do six or seven because you lost count. You won't be able to tell. So then I'm just going to pull another bead up. Right next to the last chain. Can you see that? And I'm going to chain right over the top of it. One, two three, four, five. That's it. So come back. How did I put the beads on with the flosser? You know what? At the very beginning of the video, um, you'll be able to see all that. And it was just these. Where did I put them? These little flossers. So I'll post at the very beginning a replay link so you can, you can get it. And Dorothy, this is what we used. I'm also going to post pictures of that. But all that information is at the start of this video. I'm glad you guys liked this. Um, I hope that it just shows you that you don't have to be a master to do anything. I mean, if, if anything else, that's what I prove every day. That I just, I want to do a craft. Uh, I don't have any art or artistic abilities or special education. But I just figure out how to do it the best I can. We're chaining on cord, Dorothy. Um, so you can too. You don't have to. A little practice is all you need. Okay, hope to see you guys later. Have a wonderful and blessed rest of your day.